Good evening, everyone. Time Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully, everyone's doing well. So, I have found myself in an interesting little predicament here, so to speak, and it's not necessarily a bad one, but there has been a little bit of a change with tomorrow's threat. We have an enhanced risk now, and this is a wind driven enhanced risk at that. And then also to coincide along with that, there is a 5% tornado threat area, and this even includes Pittsburgh as well. So, we're going to be, of course, going live to cover that. But also, I was originally going to plan to talk about the setup on Monday because it's been talk the town for a minute. We've made a couple of videos on the channel here for it as well. And we're probably going to discuss it tomorrow, but we may even have a weather discussion about it live, depending on how this setup goes here. But kind of interesting uh, predicament to be in in regards to scheduling here because, of course, Monday, of course, I work, but I'm expecting, I'm fully expecting to be live then as well. Then, of course, there's Tuesday, and we can go on and on about that all we want to. But in regards to tomorrow's setup, I'm mainly seeing the look of a linear event. This is definitely why the 30% wind area is there. As of right now, there are no hatched risk, but nonetheless, though, these damaging winds will be a factor this tomorrow in this setup tomorrow afternoon here we also can uh, downplay this hail threat here the hail threat actually is pretty powerful a 15 percent area as well and we're going to kind of get into the details here a bit and this is an interesting view here because i normally don't show this partially because we never really need to but this is a continental view of north america here Instead of normally looking at the lower 48, because we, we don't really get as clear of a picture if we just kind of cut off Canada at this point. The interesting thing to note is, and this is going to be that time frame when these storms get going here, is this low pressure area here, this cyclone that's going to be hanging just north of the border here. While the main part of the trough is all the way over here this way, we're going to get a small little ripple in the jet stream here. It's a miniature trough in a way and it's going to create a short wave that's going to allow these storms to fire off the lakes here with the moisture supply coming in from that and also that upper level fl flow bringing in some moisture coming into play it's going to allot for severe weather over here just right over towards that ohio valley and northeastern region here and it's even better reflected once we actually take a look at the 500 here it's when we do kind of zoom in on the u.s so this is what we're kind of looking at current time here actually i might be a little too far ahead this is getting into the morning hours that we're starting to look at here and you can see that little ripple right there start to form and right there you see a little diffluence spreading of air right here and this is going to be where our storms start to fire they could fire potentially as early as lunchtime and then there are a couple of models that kind of show a little bit of discrepancy with this and maybe a later initiation time. But either way, the look across the board is pretty much universal, mainly showing a linear mode, which is favoring damaging winds. Maybe towards this western sector, we could have an increased tornado threat there. Hence why the 5% area has been introduced. And then, of course, we already know what this is going to be for our setup to start next week here. So we'll go ahead and actually take a look at the mid levels of the atmosphere. You'll get a better view of that short wave here. Again, here is that front. This is what's going to, or that trough here, so to speak. And this is what's gonna be the catalyst to what happens next here. What you look for here is not only wind speed at the mid levels, but you're looking for a short wave to pop up here. Basically a short wave is gonna be symbolized by these isobars or these contour lines. No discrimination here as to what you call them here, but these bars here are going to start to not look necessarily as straight. They're going to have little ripples in them. It's not going to be a super stout short wave starting out, but like I said, more so towards that eastern sector here or western sector, excuse me, where you can see an increased chance of a stronger short wave here. And here's a better look right about there where I'm pointing the cursor. There is a short wave, which is going to improve the lift over this area and a lot for maybe some stronger storms to develop. 
and also to go with that of course we'll take a look at the lower level jet here and a lot of there's a lot of energy available to work with as we get into the afternoon tomorrow here here's that surge of energy that and there's actually going to be a first round of storms in the morning that could be pretty strong that could also play a part as to how the day plays out so we could see an early thread that may make its way further to the east here but the main event really seems like it's going to be towards the early to mid afternoon here and like i said the damaging wind threat really increases with this narrow lo narrow little corridor where we're getting up to about 50 60 knots in that lower level jet this is about a thousand feet above our heads these storms are our most uh, inclined to be able to take advantage of that and of course with that the damaging wind threat will increase I don't expect this to be a super long duration event by the time we get towards sunset these storms are already going to be weakening below severe limits by that point here now the interest some interesting things to make note of here are the dew points in particular you can already see the moisture return coming in as we get an early sunday morning but watch what happens as we progress throughout the day you can see that little surge of moisture coming in further towards the east here and I think this is what's also going to help influence that tornado threat. Potentially, we could see this surge a little further to the east here. And the convective mode of the storms is also going to play a part in this. Like I said, with not much in the way of forcing, I'm not expecting anything in the way of discrete cells. But I wouldn't be surprised if maybe one or two could pop off over here, maybe towards western Pennsylvania. Like I said, the moisture return is also going to play a huge part in this convective mode, etc but this is kind of almost has that vibe of the ohio setup from last month in a way as regards to the moisture return the overall setup is definitely nothing close to that but it's just a couple of things that i've kind of made an observation on and i'll be watching throughout the day to see how things pan out like i said mainly expecting a linear mode with a north to south motion the storms are going to be moving pretty much north to south at that point could be a little bit of a different look over here towards west pennsylvania like i said before so again pittsburgh keep an extra close eye on your weather that's what i would say at this point as far as the moisture return is concerned we should be a little bit more ideal further off towards the west even in central pennsylvania even heading into southeastern new york we still have dew points in the 50s and 60s more than ideal enough for severe weather just not super stout like what we will probably see in the days to follow now another thing that we'll go ahead and take a look at are the temperatures not really too stout of a warm sector of course but nonetheless here we do get some 60s we do even get some 70s over here again towards central western pennsylvania but once those storms start to fire you will feel an immediate difference once that passes through here this is going to be a like i said it's going to be a quick hitting event but it's going to knock those temperatures off briefly we will recover pretty quickly and everything will be back to about business as usual by the time we head into Monday, of course. And then, of course, we know where our new main event is going to be for the days to follow here. Also, keep an eye over towards the southeast for those warmer temperatures as well. We could even see some record temperatures over here towards the southeast as we get into Monday afternoon. But overall here, with the elements that we've looked at so far looking at our instability that's going to be one of the unknowns with this setup here that instability seems like it stays kind of far off to the west but there are some models that are kind of favoring western pennsylvania for having higher amounts of instability i.e cape and you can see the numbers being featured here areas in the blue are areas that are exceeding about a thousand joules per kilogram even getting closer to two thousand joules per kilogram but there are a number of models that are kind of showing a lot of discrepancy as to how that will pan out. This is looking at the mixed layer cape here, for example. And then also looking towards the surface cape, pretty much a similar deal. Some models are really hot more so towards Ohio and Western Pennsylvania. Some of those, some of those higher values make it a little further off to the east here, which includes central Pennsylvania, maybe even sneaking its way in Southern New York here as well. So like I said, gonna really more or less be more of a now cast situation than anything else at this point like i said i really think the peak time is gonna be a little bit after lunch maybe 2 or 3 p.m eastern so that'll probably be the time where we go live but keep in mind here 
that like like I said there's a little bit of model discrepancy here and you saw a pretty good example of that now we're gonna actually look at two different models in regards to our composite reflectivity and there's a reason why and that's gonna be due in large part to the fact that the timing is gonna be different so here's that first round of storms that I was talking about here nothing really looking like it's gonna be at severe limits over towards this region like I said this is gonna play a little bit of a factor as to what we could expect throughout the day tomorrow atmosphere is likely to recover I would say so we will see a second round and here's that round coming in right about at lunchtime and really starts to strengthen as we get into mid-afternoon over here so over towards that Ohio Pennsylvania line where I would expect some increased activity and maybe a little bit more likelihood for tornadoes but of course we can't downplay this area off to the east here for its damaging wind potential we may even see a little bit of a bow echo pop up throughout the earlier part to the afternoon now the interesting thing to make note of here is if we go to the HRRR the initiation time is a little different here so and then on top of that this goes a little further to the south and I think this setup kind of lends itself a little bit further towards a tornado threat so this early morning round ha has a little tail that pops in behind and almost kind of acts as if it's a confluence band and on the outflow boundary of that confluence band, you even see that tail forming. You'll see new storms start to fire here. And these storms look semi-discreet here. So like I said, we're going to have to keep an extra close eye on this area as we go further along into the day tomorrow to see how things pan out here. Eventually, scenario plays out just about the same here. Storms will weaken as the sun sets. So, like I said, I don't expect necessarily a long duration event, but a little bit of discrepancy as to how it all pans out here. So, definitely, if you're in Pennsylvania, particularly, keep an eye on the weather here. If you're over towards West Mass, towards Southern New York, you also need to be watching as well. But that's all I got for you guys on this video. Be live tomorrow, so we're going to see how this pans out one way or another. Till then, take care, have an awesome rest of your weekend, and stay tuned. See you soon. It's been Tyre Metalhead Weatherman. Again, have a good night.